Everywhere we look these days, we're surrounded by walls built out of concrete blocks, just like the wall behind me. Now these concrete block walls are relatively inexpensive, efficient to build, and if built correctly can last multiple lifetimes. But walls weren't always like this. Block walls like this were only invented and came into use around the 1900s. Before this, the majority of stone walls were meticulously crafted by stonemasons out of stone rubble. So I was fortunate enough to have been given the opportunity to meet a traditional stonemason and document him as he and his apprentice reconstruct a traditional rubble stone wall. My name is Paul Wilmot. I am a stonemason from Newbridge in County Clare in Ireland. I've been building stone for about 30 years now, um, all over Ireland. I first started in, in Punks Monaghan, Kite Macross, with a gentleman who taught me the trade uh, named Charlie Coleman. So before the demolition was to commence, Paul and another man called Larry Creed spent some time salvaging the old flagstones that were found on the floor within the building. These flagstones are something special because they were painstakingly cut by hand a long time ago. But these will be removed and hopefully used in some other project down the line. You can see by all the little chisel marks just how much work was gone into cutting these things once upon a time. So with the flag saved, it was time to prop up the roof. Although the roof was in very poor condition and destined to be replaced further down the line, that's a job for another day. So for now, Paul and Larry were using these acros to prop up the ceiling to prevent it from caving in once the wall got demolished. With the braces in place and everything ready for demolition, it was time to bring in the heavy machinery. My name is uh, Brian Mahoney. I'm a machine driver here with Pecron and Sons. And, uh, we're just going to knock you all here to replace and build it back up. On this particular job, we uh, rebuilt, rebuilt a wall. It was leaning over. It was originally built uh, uh, roughly about 350 years ago. And uh, it was leaning over, we knocked it down. Once he had knocked the wall, Brian used a specific type of bucket known as a riddle bucket to remove all the dirt and debris from the rubble and it was then put in a pile where it was to be reused in the reconstruction of the wall. So as we just saw, it took a few minutes to reduce a wall that had stood for centuries to rubble. The reason for this leaning is there was never any proper foundations put in place for this wall. So this time round, although not traditional, a proper concrete slab was to be poured. The wall was in over very badly, it had come down. Uh, we were trying to save it, but it wasn't possible, it was, too, it was too dangerous. So we knocked the wall down on the first day and then we separated the stones and we dug the foundations. And unfortunately we had to use concrete, but you know, that's the only non-traditional thing we used, you know. Um, but the wall will stand for another four or five hundred years because of that. We actually dug a good foundation, we had to go down to good, hit good ground before we poured the foundation. And uh, we put in a foot of concrete, right, about two metres wide. and. Uh, the reason being, we kept it on low, the yard level might be lowered at some stage, so we'd still be showing stone on it. Yeah, we just poured the foundation there for the wall, It'll, it won't be set until tomorrow. So in the meantime, we're going to pick stones here, to make three different piles, one for, I can get, try and get corn stones, Use for the wall itself and the, the, the rubble then to be the third pile that went into the centre of the wall. Uh, yeah, the next day then, was after we poured the foundation, the next day we were able to build on it. Then I set, set the wall out. The wall was two foot, two foot and an inch wide. So we had to square it up and put up our plumbing pints. Well, we reuse the stone, the reclaimed stone, and we use the lime and sand mix rather than cement, the way it was built actually back then. The lime uh, we're using is a five Newton lime. It's, uh, we, we use a two and a half to one mix, so it's two and a half sand to, to one lime. Yeah, we, the, reason, the reason we use that mix is, is it, the lime allows the, the, the wall to breed, where if, it's, if we built it with cement, the wall will not breed, it will cause severe dampness on the inside, you know? So the wall, the dampness goes in, the moisture goes into the wall about 30% when it's built with lime and it evaporates back out. But when it's built with cement, it goes, goes back, it goes into the house and, and causes dampness. After we knocked the wall down, we went about separating the stone, the, the very rough stone that we wouldn't use with one pile that we'll 
we were putting, we were building up the middle of the wall with. And then second pile was the stone we were going to build the wall with, the centre of the wall. And uh, then corner stones, any corner stones we found we went into a third pile. So I left things very handy then once, once we started to build. I was very fortunate on his job and he's been with me a few months now, Mikey O'Halloran. He's only 18 and he has love of stone and he's picked it up very, very quickly. Uh, his grandfather it was a stonemason as well and so obviously he's in his blood. But he's a great young fella, he's going to be first class stonemason. So I'll watch this space for Mikey O'Halloran. Mikey, you, you have good time in there. I'm just doing an interview here with Owen. <laughs> I'm after being singing your praises here. That's what you call it, dressing the stone. So this morning we started off with a flat surface foundation that we poured yesterday. Now we have, at the moment we have, we're we'll bringing up a 500 meter, 500 millimeter coursing. We we'll have leveling every 500 millimeters. Just, just finishing off this one here now. So then we come round the back, we we'll build the back up exactly the same height. We'll infill then with a uh, rough stone that was that's no good for face work uh, with, with lime mixed through it, you know. So, and then it'll all be up 500. I'll go back on the outside again, and I'll come back up again, another 500. Back in again, 500. Just doing 500 millimeter layers, you know. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of stone masons left in the country now. There's, there's only three or four being trained in college at the moment. I was very lucky, uh, trained with my father and all the time, Charlie Coleman. And, Charlie's 86 now and his father before him was a stonemason and gr grandfather and they're all church stonemasons. But I, I learned from the right crowd. Yeah, Charlie uh, I remember telling me stories years, years ago but when they're building the churches and the cathedrals in Ireland, they, um, there could be three, up to three to four hundred stonemasons working on any church at any one time. That's it now, Mikey, first layer all started. And it could take three and four and five years, five years to build. But he told me a story one time about that there could be chiseling a stone, one stone all day long, and come to the last chisel at the end of the day, a crack come coming out, and the whole day was gone. And it was a regular occurrence, this was seemingly. Unfortunately, uh, it's a dying trade stonemason. It's, there's, at the moment, there's only three young apprentices in, in college uh, learning the craft. There's probably another 20 around the country. And I might be exaggerating there a bit, but I would hope there's at least another 20 around the country learning it as well. But uh, there's, there's very, you've very seldom come across a 30 or 40 year old stone mason. We're all 60 upwards. We're very fortunate with a great client that uh, building, putting everything back original, and uh, he's big into the, the, the old way. And uh, it's just an awful pity there's not more like him around the country. Yeah, the client reckons the building dates back to 1660, 1670, and. Uh, it's in fantastic condition for a building that's so old. And Charlie Coleman, I mentioned earlier on about the man that served my time with, he was telling us the stories years ago, about that, from back 100, 120, 130 years ago, and longer probably, that they had a secret mix with the lime and the sand, and everybody used to be trying to find it out, but the stonemasons always kept the secret to themselves. Yeah, we're putting in a profile for the window here now. That's the, that's the open for the profile. So after lunch at some stage, Set the profile in, and we'll build we'll build the, the, the stone to to the profile. I got the carpenter on site to make, make me up timber profiles, so it's very very handy to keep uh, keep everything um, spot on, plumb all the corners. window reveal here and it's a bit tricky because it's, we have an eight, inch, an eight and a half inch piece you know it's about 220 mil and um, we have need two square sides on it and because they're all re reclaimed stone it's just extremely hard to get you know we just have to keep looking for them it's going to, it's going to take a bit of time but we'll get there you know we might get out there in the moment picking through the big pile of uh, reclaimed stone at the back you know there's about five lorry loads out there so yeah, I think they're going to be out there all day, just to get this section done, you know. The window, as you can see there, is, is lower than it, than it's going to be. We, we weren't given a def, definite heights for a window, for head heights. 
So uh, at the moment, it's just down, it, might, it might be a bit low. We'll have to add on to it when we get when we get the heights off the engineer. Once we get the heights, uh, there'll be specialist carpenters, joiners hired to make a, a casement window for us. So it, the window will look to as if it's there two or three hundred years as well. After we hit about fifteen hundred millimeters or five foot approximately in height, we we had to uh, erect a scaffolding, uh, a safe scaffolding, obviously for myself and the apprentice Mikey to walk off, you know. Uh, that was a straight wall before this, only one door. Now we have a 10 foot door and a 4 foot door and a window. The window, uh, it obviously the clients wanted it to get light into the, into the room, you know. They'll, they'll, they'll eventually take this roof off and they're going to put on a, a, a traditional uh, timber roof with, with old slates. They're using what's called a blue banger slate. And obviously the stonework will have to take a level and the stonework will have to be level from one end to the other. So we'll have to be raising these walls up slightly and then get, to get ready for up to wall plate level for the carpenters. After just another day on site, Paul and Mikey had finished this section of wall for now. Although this wall took several times longer to build than its contemporary counterpart, what it lacks for in efficiency, it makes up for in physical appearance. It was truly wonderful to watch as age-old skill and hard labour were used to rebuild this centuries-old wall back to its former glory. After we finish this job, uh, we always head up to the pub. Uh, each, after every section, it could be every two or three weeks, we, uh, we end up going up to the sportsman's here in Arla for a few pints. But for the ever in demand stonemason, the work never stops with locals of Aherla Town soliciting work off Paul even while he rests. So, but I said it would, if you get, if you get the stone from me, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and we, we do it, you know, well at all. Okay, the German would tell you we have some yards. Oh, so, I'll be talking to him later on. Although a ruin of its former self, with men like Paul still practicing and men like Mikey still training, the future for traditional stone masonry is rock solid. <laughs>